This is so cool. A space mission reaching new heights. NASA's latest mission, Juno, is now entering Jupiter's orbit and going where no other spacecraft has gone before after traveling about 1.7 billion miles over the last past five years. NASA is hoping to learn more about Jupiter's origins and composition through this $1 billion project to the largest planet in our solar system. Joining me now is former NASA astronaut and planetary scientist Tom Jones. Tom, great to see you. How cool is this? Because we think it's cool, but we're not in the space business. Uh, good morning, Dagan. This is very exciting. Juno is going to be the closest probe to approach Jupiter. It's going to whiz over the North and South Poles, plunging into its deadly radiation belts in a way that previous spacecraft have not been able to do. And this is the, the method that we'll use to probe the interior of Jupiter. And it's all about finding out the recipe for how the solar system was put together. Jupiter is such a massive planet that it sucked up all of the raw ingredients that form the Earth and the other planets like Mars and Venus and Mercury. And by probing its depths, we'll get an idea of how the early solar system formed and how this gas giant came to dominate the solar system. There was an orbiter, Galileo, I believe, in 1989 that also uh, went to Jupiter. How are these two different? Is it just an advancement in the technology? I think they're complementary in that they're going after different aspects of the Jupiter system. Galileo uh, did study the planet's upper atmosphere and dropped a probe into uh, its depths, but it also focused largely on the moons and the, the geology of the little solar system that Jupiter itself commands. But uh, Juno now is going to look into these uh, radiation belts map the inner core of Jupiter. It's probably made of metallic hydrogen under immense pressure. And Galileo was too far away from the radiation belts for safety reasons to probe that inner structure of Jupiter. So that's what Juno's uh, mission is, is to get into the depths of Jupiter uh, with the, its uh, suite of seven instruments. Uh, what kind of pictures can, you, can we expect to see from Juno, Juno as it orbits Jupiter? Well, there is a Juno cam, a camera that's a color camera that can look at the cloud tops of Jupiter and show us the aurora, uh, the northern and southern lights of Jupiter. And because Juno gets as close as about uh, 3,000 miles from the cloud tops, far closer than Galileo ever got, we're going to get some very detailed close-ups of the cloud bands that uh, mark Jupiter. And uh, these close-ups, I think, will give us more insights into the weather systems and the different chemical compositions of uh, these cloud belts and how deeply they penetrate into the Jupiter atmosphere. In terms of the, I, I think we can call it the space race, I wanted to move on to Jeff Bezos. His Blue Origin is raising the stakes in this race. by They're starting construction on a new factory in Florida to build full-scale rockets that can reach the International Space Station. And it could, the project sure will give Elon Musk SpaceX, and there's another one that's a, a joint venture between two of the big defense companies, a run for its money. Is this, a, is this a positive sign that you see so much private money pouring into this race? True. It's a competition that's going to be good for the taxpayer. If NASA buys these launch services, they'll get a lower price as a result of the competition. I think Jeff Bezos's corner here uh, with the new rocket factory at Kennedy Space Center is to compete for the orbital satellite and tourism business that Elon Musk has been talking about for the last uh, five or ten years. So Musk has been successful in launching supply ships to the International Space Station and launching satellites. And now Bezos is moving from suborbital or cannonball-style tourism uh, in the next couple of years to this orbital market where you're going to see the growth in uh, industrial and economic purposes uh, uh, using space, uh, the commercialization of low Earth orbit. It's seeing these pictures and seeing the, uh, what's happening with the, the, the Juno orbiter around Jupiter is really uplifting. But do you think, Tom, that the U.S., given the fact that our astronauts to the International Space Station have to hitch rides with the Russians, have we taken a back seat in recent years? And does that bother you at all? Well, it bothers me that we don't devote equal energy to uh, all aspects of our space program. We've sort of dropped the ball on human space flight and have let the Russians carry us to the space station for the last uh, five years. And it's going to be another couple of years before we start our own rockets under commercial uh, auspices getting up to the space station. So here we are, the only country that's ever visited Jupiter uh, with our spacecraft. Uh, we have the only ones who have landed successfully on Mars. And yet we've sort of let the, um, the human space flight program lag behind. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to revive in the next couple of years. I'm very optimistic about that. It could have been done far faster, though.
It's for somebody who spent every summer at the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. It gives inspiration to a lot of kids to be in, to work in math and science. So I relate to that. Tom, it was so great to see you. Thanks for being here so early this morning. Thank you, Dagan. Good to be with you all. A happy Independence Day to you. I hope it was a fun one.